Boom! What's up everybody? My name is Kim Skogwell and today I'll be showing you how you can take uh, an overexposed area and put color back into it. I got this question from Laura Burns and she had a photo she sent me and was asking how she could do it. This is just one of a, probably a million ways you can do it. This is the fastest, best and um, most realistic way for this particular image that I found. So I hope you learned something, uh, Laura, and that it helps you out in the future. Other than that, hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, and leave some comments down below. Let's just get to it. So we're inside of Infinity Photo, and I had Laura Burns send me this picture. She was wondering how she could uh, get this green color on the canvas here for the carriage here. So this is how the picture looked uh, when I got it. And she just wanted this overexposed part and get that green color on it. So we're gonna we're gonna go over this today. I'm gonna just show you how to use the pen tool really quickly and show you the first line here from about down here and up there and then I'm gonna leave the rest out because I have done this already and I made a little uh, I saved my selection here because this takes at least 20 minutes when I did it I think I used 24 minutes to get it uh, this good and I could probably have spent a lot more time on it to get it even better so I'm just gonna group this put it down at the bottom here so the first thing we're going to do with this uh, image is we're going to start masking out. So you make sure we're on this background layer. We're going to hit P on uh, the, your keyboard. We're going to zoom in by Control Plus. And we're going to start, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. And then hold down spacebar and you can move around here. And you can see we have some fringing here on the color. So to make this look real, we're going to put it on this inside here or outside, depending on how you look at it. And then we're going to keep this blue line. Once I go out here, we're going to keep that blue line on like so, so we can fill this in very nicely. Cool. So I'm going to set my first anchor point here or node. Then I'm going to zoom back out again by control uh, command minus and then just move up here. I'm gonna zoom back in again so I can find a good spot. You can see this canvas stuff goes all the way up here. So I'm gonna click just on the inside of the white there and start dragging out. But now if I start dragging here, if you hold down control, you can take this one and start dragging. I can't really see what I'm doing, so I'm gonna have to zoom out again. So I'm gonna find my node here, hold, keep holding down control. And then we're just going to drag it out until we make it match so this curvature. And if it's a little bit on the inside, that, that's not a big deal. That's better than if it goes like this. So we're just going to keep it right about there is good. Cool. So now we can zoom back in and just inspect this line here. And you can see now that it goes a pretty nice curvature all over here. And then to keep going across the roof here, you need to take this node here and you can hold down control and shift at the same time. You see your little pointer here change color. So now you can move it and set it to this direction because you want to go this way. So now you just click right here in this little then and now you do the opposite to move it out until it's a matching the edge here and then you just hold down alt and you can move uh, this node again if you haven't let go of it with it with your mouse then hold down spacebar go further away you can see here there's a couple of more so you just click here and hold and then you drag it up hold on alt drag this pin back and then you go here and let's say we we have now gone through the whole roof here, done it the same way here. Make sure we go down here. So I'm gonna just 
make an example. We can sort of see it looks like they're going up and down, up and down. So here you just click there, click there, click there, and click. You get the idea here. And you go like this until you get back here. Make sure you are on the other side. And if you this yellow markup, that means you can close this. So I like to click just a little bit before it, or you can click on it. Let's see if we can get this yellow circle back. Then we just drag out here and try and match the blue line with the shape there. Can close it like that or just go up here to selection. You have to press selection either way to get there. Okay, so now you have taken your time, made this look uh, really nice, this selection. You have, and it looks like this because you go around this mushroom cloud as well. Now you go up here to select, you go down to feather, you click feather, and then you want to give this two pixels of feather. So you just mark there and hit the number two on your keyboard and then enter. So now it's being feathered by two pixels. And this is going to help make it realistic because you don't get a harsh, abrupt edge on it. I forgot to um, tell you. So I'm going to get my selection back here. So once you have done that, you set the feather, you go into your channel section. If you don't see your channels, go up here to view, studio, and then uh, cha channels. There we go. And then you go down here to it says pixel selection. Since we have this mark, you're going to see just like here, a little white uh, icon up there and then pixel selection. Now right click on this and create a spare channel. And if you right click on this spare channel you created, you can rename that uh, whatever you want, uh, canvas top, like so. So now you know, now you can cl click uh, Control and D to uh, deselect. And if you want to get it back, you just right click on this and then load to pixel selection. And I highly recommend you do this. It will make your life a whole lot easier. Cool. So we're done with the with the masking. Now it comes to bring some more of this green color back so we can make this look realistic. Duplicate your background layer here. Just command control J, duplicate it. Now we're going to go up here to blend modes and we're going to go to multiply. Now we can see we got a little bit more green in it. Also, we're going to uh, duplicate this again by command control J. And since it's already a multiply, sweet. We now see we got even more here. I'm gonna do this one more time. Then we got some more information in. So you have three new layers here. So just mark the top one, hold down shift and click the third one. Leave your original layer untouched. Then you click Control Command G to group them. And we can just call it Luminosity Canvas. That way we know what it is. And you see, this doesn't look great at all. So everything here looks really good, except for just this canvas stuff. So mark it, hold down Alt on your keyboard, and go down to this mask layer icon and click it. That means we put a black mask on all of these layers here. And that's uh, everything that is black will be hidden. Everything that is white will be shown. So this is black. Now we can't see it. So what you want to do here is mark this background layer, your original one, go up to your, uh, the, your channel here and load this to pixel selection, the one you just made, the selection of this canvas stuff. Load to pixel selection. Awesome. Then we go over here and click on this mask we just added. So we're going to hit B on our keyboard. Make sure you have a big brush size but you can use in the open and close bracket to uh, to fix the sizes. We're going to hit D on our keyboard. So we get foreground color black or white. If you're white, you have white first, just hit X and it will change. So we're going to have white here. And you can see when I just hold my cursor over here, it starts to add in some of that green. So now you just want to paint in here a little bit until you get this mask looks like this, like a canvas top, but we masked out. 
So now we're using most of the information that was in this picture. So, okay, that does not look the best yet, but we're gonna get to it. But you can see it looks a little bit different, but it still looks, it looks good. So we're gonna keep this. Now we're gonna go here and we're gonna go down to this add pixel layer, click it. Perfect. We're gonna make sure we have the mask, the Martian ants around here still. So you right click on your channel, the one you made, and load pixel selection. Now we're gonna go up to this eyedropper tool here and we're gonna can click and drag it. And we're gonna take start up here with one of these green colors right about there. And then click on this little icon. When you have the brush tool active, you can also hit uh, Alt and hold Alt while you click on a place on the uh, the image where you want to sample color from, but I feel like this is a little bit more accurate. Cool. Since we have this selected, now we can just paint over it without being afraid of, of uh, painting anywhere else on the picture. And we can now go here to our layer and we're going to change this into average. Now we can see we have made it a little bit better again. It's not perfect yet, but it looks a lot better. So if I shift click these two layers and unhook, we can see what, what we have done so far. So it hasn't been this, this hard or the hardest part here is the masking. You're going to go back here, have another layer. I'm going to make sure we still are selected the canvas here but now we're going to choose this deeper darker green color here and set that active and the reason we do this is because we can see that the sun is pretty much hitting right here and since this sun is hitting here for the most part since this has a curvature to it this will be a shaded area this should be darker than here and the top here should also be a little bit darker, and especially on the back here. You can sort of see where the sun has been. So have your brush tool, make sure you have that darker color, and then just do a couple of folds over, like so. This, I'm gonna make it a little bit darker down there. So that's perfect. Okay, so what have we done so far? So now we can see the difference. But you see this sort of look painted, it doesn't look 100% yet. So we're gonna just mark the top layer, we're gonna add another pixel layer on top of it. But now we're gonna still have it um, marching ants around it, have it selected. Now we're gonna just choose the black as our painting color. And this doesn't really matter, we're just gonna paint a little bit over like so. I'm gonna hit V on my keyboard. I'm gonna make sure we're on this picture, uh, layer. Then we're gonna go up here to filters, and we're gonna to go to noise, and then Perlin noise. And now you can see if we add, move these sliders a little bit, we can change the noise frequency or size of it, or how much there's supposed to be, be of it. And since this is an old carriage, it should probably be a little bit weathered so we're gonna i'm gonna try this out here this looks sort of i think that will look good just hit apply and then we're gonna go back down here to our average and we didn't change this to average yet because we're gonna see now what you like better so this looks pretty good because it's sort of matching this green color that goes around here on the edge and over here. If we change this color or a layer down to average as well, you can see it becomes a little bit more lighter. So now it sort of looks a little bit more uh, like a cartoony, but it's all this is all personal preference. Whatever it is you do, you like, you can use. Or you can use other blend modes here too. You just have to go through and choose the ones you like. I kind of like this linear, linear burn right now. I'm going to just set down the opacity a little bit, like so. And then we're going to 
click on the top layer here. We're gonna just call this um, weathered. And then we have the top series. So now we can still have that one. Shift click on these three, Command Control G to group them and just call them canvas color. So that looks pretty decent to me. And since we did a nice long uh, pen tool stroke here, or when we masked it out, you can see that this edge here looks really good. The same at the back here. And because we feathered it, it gets a very subtle and nice graduation in on the color. So it looks a lot better than if it was a harsh line. So thank you very much to, uh, to you, Laura, for sending me this picture and uh, asking how we could do it. I hope this will help you out in the future. So if you have other pictures you want to do this to, uh, this is one way. There is a million different ways. There is about one way for each photographer or retoucher out there. This is just one of the ways I use. But for this particular image, this was the best and easiest and quickest way I could figure out. So if you like this tutorial, please hit that subscribe button and uh, give me a thumbs up, leave some comments down below and don't forget that notification bell as well. Till next time.